Well, joining me now is one of the Democrats uh, in charge of this messaging issue and one that's uh, at the top of the campaign arm of the Democratic uh, of the House Democrats, Sherry Bustos, is a Democrat from Illinois, chair of the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, uh, and joins me now, Congresswoman Bustos. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you, Chuck. Let me start with what tomorrow's news is going to be. And I know that you could say we've been pretty cynical about this, but I'm going to be cynical about this. I do not understand what, what they're voting on tomorrow. And it is bizarre to me that they're voting on rules for something that they have yet to decide if they're going to do it. Do you understand why people are confused about what they're doing tomorrow? Well, I, I think it, what we all should be thinking about is let's just seek out the truth and be happy with seeking out the truth. People can call this whatever they want to call it, but uh, you know, I'm, I was an investigative reporter. I worked in the your line of work as a, as a mm -hmm. reporter for almost 20 years of my life. And, and you know, the, Chuck, in the end, the goal is to get to the truth. And, and I, I think we ought to just be happy with those who are seeking the truth. And, and I'm happy with just saying we are seek, we, we are. Well, it sounds seekers. like you want semantics. You think it's just politically easier to have all sorts of semantics so that way you could technically say you never started impeachment, but for those of you that want it, you could say, but we're kind of doing impeachment. I well, mean, look, it does we, feel like semantics, I guess, is an ally. We have uh, 435 members of Congress. We are all independent practitioners. We all, we all come from different places and have different views. And, and again, I don't, there's no reason to get hung up on whatever anybody chooses to call this. You've got Jerry Nadler, who heads the Judiciary Committee, who's a good and honorable and smart man. Yeah. Um, and he wants to seek the truth. And, and um, I, I can live with that. I can live with the nuances all around that. All right. Well, let me just get you to respond to not just me. I want, to, I want you to respond to President Obama's chief speechwriter, somebody that some would say knows a little something about messaging, John Favreau. And this is what he tweeted. The communication staffers and consultants who have signed off on this absurd and intentionally confused message strategy around impeachment should resign from politics forever. Either support impeachment or oppose it. You can't fool people into thinking you're doing both. Stop treating voters like they're stupid. Well, there, there, in addition to the Judiciary Committee, there's the Oversight Committee, there's the Intelligence Committee, there's Financial Services. Uh, there, we've got several committees that are seeking the truth on this. Um, look, he, it's easy to sit on the sideline and and say that somebody ought to do this or do that, but uh, you know, we're we're in the heat of it, um, and and I can live again. I'm I'm a member of Congress from downstate Illinois, mm -hmm. and um, and I can live with seeking the truth showing the American public that we are doing what we can to get to the truth. And, um, and, and I hope that we are okay with that. Um, I, and if you want to look long term too, um, I would ask the question, is all of this call for impeachment or yeah. impeachment inquiry or whatever anybody wants to call it, is that uniting our country? Um, I, I, have a, I have a big desire um, in my day-to-day -day life, whether I am home or whether I'm out here, uh, to, to try to bring people together instead of constantly look for ways to divide our country, divide people among you know, the Democrats and the Republicans. Um, I, I think we ought to look for ways to seek the truth and, and not be so divisive. And, and, right. and again, I can be happy with that. Let me talk about last night. What did you learn from North Carolina 9? Well, I learned that we, uh, we improved our performance, that uh, Trump won the district by 10 points. And we've got 35 Republicans all over this country who are in districts that are easier for Democrats to win than what happened last night. So um, I, I think this shows that um, every Republican who's, who won by five points or fewer, who are in these, these districts mm -hmm. that, uh, that makes them vulnerable, we're, we're going to play in those districts, we're going to yeah. be aggressive in those districts, and I think this is a pretty bad sign for them. Uh, to, to, a, to have a 10-point improvement in less than you know, three years that President yeah. Trump has been in office, I think that's a pretty darn good performance. If a presidential campaign called you up and said, hey, if I'm the nominee, what do I need to know about, about carrying an area like this? What should I learn from this district that'll help me win a general election, what would you tell that presidential candidate? Um, to have ideas, to show they care, to show they understand, uh, to show that they're going to do something about bringing down the cost of health care, improve our kids' education. Because McCready didn't it. run against Trump, did he? No, he didn't. He didn't run did against not. Trump. He did he not. He didn't run on impeachment. He didn't run on some of the, the larger, the big progressive ideas either. What should, should presidential campaigns be listening to that? 
Yeah, uh, Dan McCready in a Trump plus 12 district only lost by two points. So Dan McCready did a lot right, and he showed up in uh, rural towns, he showed up in the bigger towns. Uh, he campaigned for the last 27 months. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know, I, ca I can't even imagine going through that. It's, a, that, it's, it's tough. But he, he showed up and he had a 10 point improvement over the president's performance in right. 2016. So I think there's a lot we can take from, from what Dan McCready did. And while I always want to get that W, yeah. uh, that, that win, uh, we, we weren't able to get you know, just over the finish what? line, but, but he did very well. Let's talk about Rural America. One of the mm -hmm. reasons you're there at the DCCC is you made a very, you've made a very passionate case to reporters my, like myself, to your colleagues. You know, you, you, you know Trump country. You're comfortable in, you're talking to Trump voters. You can win over a Trump voter. The Rural America well, issue seems to be worse for Democrats today than it even was before. Is this just something that you're not going to break through with, in the era of Trump? Well, I, I would absolutely refuse to say that we couldn't break through in the era of Trump. I come from a Trump district. I live along the Mississippi River in downstate Illinois. I live in a town called Moline. 85% um, of the towns in my congressional district are 5,000 people or fewer. I mean, this is, um, other, other than a few uh, towns in my congressional district, it is, it is rural Midwest. I won in a Trump district by 24 points. So, um, no, I, I do not uh, take that premise that Democrats, Democrats cannot perform well in a rural district. We can do it. Um, and uh, Dan McCready is proof that you can come really, really close, yeah. that Republicans all over America, if you yeah. won by five points or fewer, um, beware, because we've got great Democrats who are going to be running leading into uh, November of 2020. And, um, I, and, and our goal is to hang on to the tough seats that we do have that yeah. we were able to pick up in, in 2018 and, uh, and pick up a few more along the way. Uh, presidential candidates, including Elizabeth Warren, are endorsing in primaries that challenge incumbent House Democrats. Uh, you comfortable with that, or do you wish the presidential candidates would stay out? I, I don't think uh, any of the presidential candidates are going to listen to me if I ask them to endorse somebody or not endorse somebody. That's up to them. Um, it, it's, it's not what, what I would prefer. Um, you know, I'm not somebody who works against incumbent Democrats. I work for them. I think we've got a, uh, we've got a great freshman class. We have great members um, mm -hmm. who have been here for many years. And together, we, we make up a, a, a robust caucus that is fighting every single day uh, for hardworking people. I, I think we've got a great caucus, I, uh, but, right. but I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to be able to tell the presidential DCCC candidates what to do. still supports Congressman Cuellar, still supports Congressman Lipinski. A absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Congresswoman Sherry Bustos, Democrat from Illinois, thanks for coming on sharing your views. Thank you, Jack. Much appreciate it. Hello, YouTubers. If you're watching this, it means you've checked out our channel, so thank you. Now do me a favor. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there. Click on any of the videos to watch the latest interviews and highlights from MTP Daily and MSNBC. You can get more Beat the Press content every morning in the First Read newsletter. If you're tired of content that you don't know anything about where it came from, you don't have to have that problem with us. NBC News, MSNBC, MTP, and the Meet the Press mindset right here for you on YouTube. Subscribe now.